Hello and welcome back to Desktop Publishing with Quark Express. My name is Martin Turner and today we're going to be talking about lists. Now, lists are a feature of uh, Quark Express which essentially take tag text and they make single or multi-level lists either in order of appearance or in alphabetical order and they give hyperlinks as required and that's quite a mouthful but they are very powerful and very useful. And I want to look at uh, just seven or eight things. Lists for chapter headings, uh, lists for uh, short summaries, uh, lists for glossaries, lists for navigation, uh, lists for tagging errors, exporting lists as PDF hyperlinks, and exporting lists as ebook table of contents, which we've looked at a little bit before. Well, to help us out, I've downloaded from Project Gutenberg uh, the complete text of Gulliver's Travels. And um, I've not really done much in terms of formatting to it. Um, uh, what I have done, though, uh, is... Let me just delete that. Uh, we'll come to that in a second. What I have done is I've gone through and I've used search and replace to uh, tag the parts uh, and the chapters. So anything with part gets a part tag, anything a chapter gets a chapter tag. And I've also got a, a couple of conditional style sheets. So what I've noticed in this book uh, is that um, where you have uh, a, a summary, uh, you, uh, that's usually the beginning of the uh, chapter. And so what I'm going to do now is just press set summaries, let that run for a moment. Uh, and what we'll see is that where we've got these summaries at the beginning of the chapter, which, which uh, Swift likes to put in, um, you'll see another one here, uh, I've just made those into italics, and that's tagged them. That's really all I've done to it so far. So, where does that take us? Well, uh, let's go to lists. So we're going to find lists in window lists. Very simple. And um, I've, I've created a couple of lists, actually four lists, based on some things I'm interested in. So the most basic one is a simple table of contents. And uh, to, to do that, I go to, I could create a list, but let's do that right now. I'm gonna call that uh, TOC. If you read about TOC in a manual, it almost always means table of contents. For some reason, people think it's fine to put TOC and not explain what table of contents is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the chapter titles and this is now lifting anything with the, the tag chapter. I'm going to give it level one. I'm only going to have one thing here. I'm going to number it, text, page number, and format as, well, normal for the time being. Okay, let's do that. And that's going to now appear here. Uh, and what you can see is it's already made this list. Now, to make that appear in my document, I click onto an empty frame, and I just do build. Uh, and what you'll see is all these numbers uh, have come up by the side. Not particularly helpful, it's not very nice, but these are separated by a tab. So very simply, if I go down to paragraph, so I'm sorry, down to tabs on the measurements panel, and uh, when I do that, up comes uh, this tab bar here, and I'm just going to move the right tab uh, over to uh, there, do I want to do that? Don't really like that. Let's put a fill character in, uh, and then let's do that again. And there we go. Now these chapters are in themselves not very enticing, uh, and it misses out part of the structure of the book, uh, which is that chapters also part of parts. So let's go to a slightly more complicated one. So I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, just delete it. It remains here in the, 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 the list, so you can get rid of it on the screen, or on, the, on the document, and it remains a list. Um, but we're now going to go to one I've created earlier, chapters and parts. And let's have a look at that. So what I've got now is I've uh, given chapter level two, and numbering text page number, and format as talk level two, it's just a style sheet I've created, I can give it any format I want, so I can, I can give it any tag I want and part, it's level one, text only, uh, talk level one. 
And again, that's a style sheet I've created. So let's, let's see what happens if I build that. So I'm gonna update first. Well, let's go to yeah, chapters and parts uh, and build. And in it goes. And you'll see that's a, a, a more interesting arrangement. Uh, but I can go further because what I've noticed, and I've, this is a book from, when is it? Uh, 1726 to 27. I've noticed in a lot of these books that the summaries are included, uh, like this one, with uh, the table of contents. So let's now go to another one, which is summaries. And I made this earlier and have a look at it. So now we've got chapter as, actually make that level two, I'm not using really these levels, but never mind, part as level one, but I've now introduced summary as level three, and I'm keeping it formatted as summary. So let's see what happens. So I'm gonna go back up to my table of contents. Again, I'm gonna delete that, and uh, we'll now just update that and build. And this is gonna take a little bit longer because it's looking at a lot more text, but it's going through uh, the entire book and finding every time there's a summary. And you'll see those summaries are now there. Now, I should tell you, this is not really what it's designed for. And there is, in fact, an absolute limit on the number of letters that you can have, number of characters, which is 256. If, it, if the summary is longer than 256 characters, it gets lopped off. Now, you can solve this with a slightly cleverer uh, conditional style, where it sets summary uh, as, uh, you look at my conditional style here, all it's doing is uh, going uh, to, uh, what am I doing here? Um, it's, it's, it's going to the uh, next paragraph. Oh yeah, and it's repeating, this is a clever bit. It's repeating at uh, slash p chapter. So whenever it, it finds a new chapter heading, it then goes through to the next paragraph so it avoids the chapter and then applies uh, the summary tag to uh, until the end of the paragraph. But I could do a slightly cleverer uh, conditional style where it only tags it uh, with the first couple of sentences. And that would still be enough. So that's your basic use of a table of contents uh, for a list. But we can do much more with lists because if you now just click on here, you'll see that if you double click, it goes straight to where you've got the list. So look at that again. Uh, if I double click on part two, it will take me straight to part two. So these are very useful for navigating around the document. Let me come back to the things I said I'd tell you about. So list for chapter headings, list for summaries. Um, well, we're gonna go to navigation right now because we're already there. So um, I'm now just using this to navigate around the document. And that's really useful. So let's imagine I've also got another thing which um, I'm, I'm collecting odd words because Swift loves to create new words uh, in Gulliver's Travels. It's one of the, the characteristics. So I'm gonna call that glossary. And uh, glossary, if I now uh, rerun my spell check story on autocorrect XT, which I'm using, um, it, I, I've set glossary to uh, be no language. So when I'm finding a word that, that it, it doesn't know about at all, I'm just making that as glossary. Now, um, you can use lists in different kinds of ways, but what I'm often doing with this sort of thing uh, is I'm using them to navigate, but also to help me out in the editorial process. Let's go back to the screen. So it's, it's, it's gone through that. Now, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I've got a, uh, uh, over here, I've got glossary. Let's have a look at this. Um, so glossary is, it looks at the character style sheet glossary. Uh, it's text only. Format doesn't normal, but it now does it in alphabetical order. And I've put this right at the end. So let me go to my page uh, layout. And what I'm just doing is compiling here uh, a glossary of words which uh, exist only uh, in uh, Gulliver's Travels. So I just need to update that. Now, when I update it and I'm gonna replace it, it always asks me, uh, do I want uh, to replace uh, this text? with what I'm doing? And the answer is usually uh, yes. So now we've got these things and I can then edit that to my heart's content. Uh, I, I can uh, now write in uh, what I want. And as long as I don't update that again, so if I now update and build, 
uh, then it deletes my other text. So what I might want to do is just copy that and uh, put it into a, a different, uh, a different uh, frame, and I can work on that at some other point. But I can keep updating that, but I can also edit it as much as I want. Okay, so um, this is really interesting uh, because um, we, we, we've now got a list for glossary, we're using alphabetical order. I could also, if I wanted to, have, have that actually come up with the text or the page number and the text uh, the other way around. So let me update that again and build it, uh, replace, and it tells me where those things come. But what else might I want to do? Well, I've noticed in the text there are quite a few places uh, where there are, let me just find one right now, uh, where there are open square brackets. Okay, and a look at that. Where, and there's like this number 301. Now, I downloaded this from Project Gutenberg. I don't know what their editorial policy was. Um, these clearly are not page numbers regularly because they're not used throughout. I think, uh, because I know somebody used to work in Project Gutenberg, that some of the editors have included the page numbers from the original, the others haven't. Well, I don't really want those, but I'm not quite sure I want to get rid of them right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run uh, a, a, a thing called set queries. And set queries is another conditional style sheet which I've created. Um, now this is gonna run for a second, but what it does is it goes up to that character open square brackets, it applies query through uh, character close square brackets. Uh, and that should now have run uh, on that entire text. And uh, I've now got uh, a list called queries. And the way that list works is it just finds uh, query uh, text only, normal. I'm not actually going to include that anywhere in my document. I just want to know where these things are. I don't want to run a find and replace every time. Uh, so number 301, also I've used query to, to set it a particular color. So I could now go back to perhaps Everest commissioned me to do this and say, uh, why are these numbers here? Um, what is this 454A, 454B, what's going on here? And they might well say, no, actually you've misunderstood it entirely. That's part of Gulliver's Travels. Okay, I think they're page numbers, but I might be wrong. So I don't want to do any destructive editing. That list just helps me get around. So we've looked at lists for chapter headings. We've looked at lists for uh, short summaries. We've looked at lists for glossaries. We've looked at lists for navigation. We've looked at lists for tagging errors. Well, let's now look at lists for PDF hyperlinks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, uh, file export as uh, PDF. And, uh, okay, we're gonna call it Gulliver's Travels, not lists. Uh, and uh, I'm now going to uh, export uh, for uh, the screen and options. And I'm gonna to go to hyperlinks. And by default, Quark Express, when you choose the screen export, creates hyperlinks and export lists as hyperlinks. You can see over here. So what I'm doing there, uh, let me come back. I'm doing file, export as PDF. I'm just choosing a preset. If I do preset press, you'll see that within that preset, there are no hyperlinks. It doesn't want to include those because you wouldn't usually do that for press export. So imagine I'm gonna go now do um, screen medium quality uh, and uh, hyperlinks, include hyperlinks, yes. Export lists as hyperlinks, yes. Export indexes as hyperlinks, we looked at that the other time, yes. Export lists as bookmarks, that's really important. And I can use all lists or I can just use the list uh, of uh, TOC, table of contents. That's quite important. Now, uh, we'll just export that now, Gulliver's Travels. Uh, we're gonna turn open PDF uh, after export on, uh, so we can go straight there, and uh, off we go. And that's gonna take uh, a few moments to process uh, because there's quite a lot of text there. Um, but the upshot of this is quite cool, is that we're going to get to a document, which is a PDF, which you navigate around, and where the bookmarks are automatically configured to match uh, the editorial work I did just in terms of chat tagging those chapters. 
Um, well, that really is, has got quite a long way to go still. So uh, I'm just going to fast forward now. Here's my table of contents. And if I now click anyone here, you see that that's changing to a, a, a finger. It'll take me straight to that chapter. So that is exporting uh, for a PDF. And that's very useful. Uh, you could, of course, go through with uh, Kala's PDF Toolbox or Acrobat or some other editor and put hyperlinks in. But why should you? Quark Express has already done the work for you. And also, we can do exactly the same thing with an EPUB. So we looked at this the other day. We're not going to go all the way through it right now. But uh, just to refresh our memories, to, to make an EPUB, we need to go to uh, Layout and Pages to reflow, uh, we're going to add uh, one article per story, uh, and uh, that goes in there. And now, if we go to export as EPUB, uh, then uh, what's going to happen is if we do options, table of contents, we can use the table of contents, uh, our talk, uh, um, in particular this chapters and parts one, as our table of contents for that EPUB. Uh, and in that way, that will work very well. So to summarize on lists, uh, you use them with tag text. You can tag with a paragraph style, or you can tag with a character style, or you can mix the two. You can have lists that give you page numbers, in which case there'll be a tab character inserted. You can format so that comes out nicely. Or without, you can have them in alphabetical order. A list always enables you to navigate right around the document. Uh, you can therefore also use it for tagging errors. You don't have to put the list into the document anywhere. And then you can use them to automatically create hyperlinks in PDFs uh, and tables of contents in EPUBs and Kindles. Well, that's all we've got time for this week. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, my name is Martin Turner, author of Desktop Publishing with Quark Express uh, 2017. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. Watch again in the meantime. Happy Quark.